Hello everyone, my name is Daniel and I'm a programmer and an artist. And today I wanted to do something a little bit different from all the geometry node stuff and talk about a variation in Blender and specifically about uh, color variation. And not just Blender actually, um, I'm going to do it in Blender, but this, this method can be applied in a shader in Unity or something as well. So here you can see the result, I think it looks pretty good. Um, First, I just want to talk about a couple of other methods, which you may have likely heard of before. Um, first one is you can have, if you have separate objects, you can just get an object info node and like plug the random into a, a hue or use the, a random value to, um, into a mix node or as a factor into a mixed color node. Um, or you can, you can use that random value somehow. Um, if you're using cycles, you can use random per island if all of your meshes are joined together. It doesn't work in Eevee, unfortunately. Or you can make a random island value node, which is um, looks like this. You just put a random value, island index into the ID, you can expose the seed, and then you capture it either as a float or a vector as an attribute. Um, that's a node uh, that's a node that I use all the time, um, and that, and this method does work in EV and cycles, if you make it an attribute. So that random attribute method is possibly the most um, robust. Anyway, all of those though they get you a value between zero and one that works great, but you either get a huge range of colors like every possible hue is allowed, um, or you know if you plug this instead of we plug this instead into the value, you'll get some of these are made some more, you'll get some that are super dark, some that are really light. Anyway, all of these are good methods that you can use, but um, they're not the one I want to really focus on today. The one I want to focus on today has a couple additional benefits. First, um, you don't have to fiddle, you don't, it doesn't take as many nodes to get the colors right. Say you only wanted greens and browns, you don't have to like do a mixed node and pick green and brown and then add a hue variation and decide how large of a range that should be and it ends up being, you can end up adding a ton of nodes just to vary the color. Um, what if instead all of that information was already saved in a texture? So, um, the method we're going to use here uses color palette textures. This is just an 8x8 grid of colors that I've extracted from an image. I'll show how we do that in a second. Um, and then what's really cool about this is, say we decide we want to make it orange. Well, you can just open an orange palette and then your whole setup has changed completely. Um, or what if we wanted to make it neon, very bright colors? You can do that too. Um, and the and it's super easy to make these color palette textures, and then you can just have a library of them that you can um, use. And then, if you really want to, you can put a hue um, hue saturation value node on that. Maybe we don't want it to be pink. Well, then you can just shift the hue to orange or something. Um, so even the color, you're not even limited by the colors that are saved in the uh, color palette texture specifically. Um, so that's basically what I wanted to show. The way you can set that up is just um, you put a random island value node where you capture a vector and then um, so if we view that it looks like this. So each mesh island of all of these books have a color assigned to them that's random and then we just add that as an offset to the or we don't even add that we just use that as a UV coordinate to sample a color so the entire mesh samples a single pixel from this color palette texture. Um, and that gets us these colors which then we can use to modify the texture. So that's all there is to it. It's super simple. It's really useful. I use it a lot. Um, and, it, and it makes it really easy to swap out and try different colors. Um, so what I have is, on my Gumroad, I uploaded this file, which is my color palette packer file, um, that makes those textures. So there's two ways you can do it. Um, the camera's animated, move over on frame two to this one. This one you can pick your colors if you want um, 
if you have specific colors in mind, but you want some variation to them, you can just kind of build it. So that's an option. Um, or the one I use most often is I just go on uh, Pexels, which they have free stock photos. And um, one thing that's really cool about this site is um, they have this cool like color sorting algorithm as you scroll like the colors slowly change which I think is pretty neat but you can just copy an image from this and if you have the image paste add-on you can paste it in or you can um, download it and bring it in as an image then if you just select that image from here your colors change you can run the script which will try to sort them with dark colors at the bottom and brighter colors at the top and it sort of works sometimes um, other times it like what I wanted to do is have all the blues together but um, anyway it's better than it being completely random then you can just render that as an image and save it to your color palettes folder so we could call this one yellow 2 and then you can come back over to your um, scene, open up blue yellow, and bam, there you got a whole different feel to your scene. So this um, um, this color palette packer blend file is up on my Gumroad. Um, if you want to give me a buck or two for it, that'd be great. Otherwise, it's available for free, and um, yeah, that's all I've got for now. Hopefully you found it interesting and a uh, new idea. And thanks for watching.